Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with Two Humans. I'm human number one, John McRae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. And the title of this episode is Alpha Schmalpha, You're Not My Real Daddy. So, John, <laughs> we're obviously going to be talking about alpha males, but that title is also uh, playing on the, uh, the, the statement, who's your daddy, or the question, who's, who's your daddy. Who's which your is, daddy, which is and, something uh, an alpha male might say. <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, and like what somebody who's a, a child from a divorced home or something might say, you, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Right. <laughs> so, right. so that's what we're and playing with. And it's a, it's a nod, a subtle nod to the Little Rascals television show with Alfalfa. <laughs> yeah, the Alpha Schmalfa. I never, never thought about that. Really. Yeah. Just a subtle nod back to the glory days. Subliminal. Subliminal. Mm-hmm. He was yes. uh, – Alpha Schweitzer was, uh, I think it was Schweitzer. He was buried in uh, Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Oh. And it had a very tragic life after he left. <laughs> after oh. he left. After. I'm shocked. A child star having a tragic right. life. Right. Uh, the, uh, Hollywood Forever is a cemetery very close to my house mm-hmm. uh, where uh, a lot of famous people were buried, but they also show horror movies during the yeah. summer in the cemetery. Yeah. I they saw do the a lot shining. Of I saw the shining there. Which oh, was great. just fantastic. Yeah. I think they project it against the ma- the big mausoleum building. Yes, right? they do. And you sit on <laughs> grave sites. It's, it's it. insane. Only in I LA. Only in LA. They have a great Day of the Dead celebration there, too. Yes. The Hollywood Forever. Hell yeah. Um, so anyway, John, I just want to say this topic was one of the most difficult episodes that, that I've done so far, as, as far as researching and what to put into it. And I was working on this literally up until about 15 minutes ago when we started. Uh, and one of the reasons is I I didn't know if I was going to talk about alpha males from a physical anthropology standpoint, from a cultural anthropology standpoint. Is it psychology, biology, mm. or social behaviors? Uh, or do I just talk about the history of the concept of an alpha male? And Wow. And then, you know, it brings up all of these ideas about manhood, masculinity, misogyny, uh, aggression, bullying, (laughs) and all of this. How do you talk about that in an hour in a supposedly comedy podcast? (laughs) Yes. Well, I tag our podcast as humor, not comedy. Yeah. We're more humorous. What, than do you think that's comedy. more so- sophisticated? Yes. Is that what it yes. is? <laughs> it, gives, it gives you a little leeway is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay. I didn't know there was that distinction. That was, yes. Uh, uh, I remember when uh, our friend Jeff and I, we had a greeting card company at one time. Yes, a very good one. <laughs> we were nominated for uh, Best Comedy Greeting Card of the Year, which oh. are the Louis Awards. They're like the... Uh, the the Emmys and the Oscars for greeting card, <laughs> but we were nominated, but we were best comedy or uh, best comedy greeting card, uh, two dollars and above. <laughs> so oh was, Jesus! We were above the line. We are above the wow. line. Wow! Distinction. Wow! Yeah, below the line, you got. Uh, <laughs> hey! Yeah, yeah, just a funny it's like your a cat. Birthday. A cat drinking a beer above the line. You got right. Some, <laughs> some, some really professional writing going on. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so before we begin, I just want to apologize to everybody uh, if it seems like I'm jumping around a bit, or if it seems like I, I'm trying to talk about everything uh, because I am. <laughs> I'm trying to get well, it all I in mean, there. This is probably a good time to bring a lot of our fan mail has says that lately you've been jumping around and was, uh, <laughs> deliberate yeah. as you were in season one. Yeah, exactly. The this wheels is have come two. off the wagon. Yeah. Season two everybody is always, always tough. It's always, everybody wonders why the season two of a TV show is worse <laughs> than season one. It's because everybody's exhausted. Right. You gave everything you got to launch the ship and you know, now you're screwed. Right. I'm writing this one on the fly. The other one, we, we had a little leeway in there. but All right. uh, So anyway, over the past 20 years, as you probably know or are aware of, the idea of the alpha male has really taken hold in popular culture. Oh, God, yes. As, <laughs> as an alpha male, 
I'm not an alpha male. Yeah. As a beta yeah, male. A, <laughs> you're a high beta. You're a beta plus. Uh, beta I plus. don't know. <laughs> uh, but if you Google alpha male, and I was trying to find people who had written critical arguments or people who had written critical books about this phenomenon. Yes. Uh, but if you Google it or go to Amazon, there's thousands of websites mm. and books telling you how to become an alpha male. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's nobody really looking at it uh, from a critical standpoint. Yeah. And if everybody's uh, becoming an alpha male, there's a problem right. there. Right. <laughs> then, right. Then we got to start writing books on how to be an alpha alpha male. <laughs> right. If everybody's at that, it reaches that benchmark of alpha yeah. male. Guess what? Suddenly, you're a beta male. <laughs> yeah, it starts over. It starts over. It never ends. Uh, so what do we mean by alpha male? And that's in her book, Sexual Selections, What We Can and Can't Learn About Sex from Animals. Marlene Zook quotes the New York Times, who, who said in 1999, alpha males dominate and lead other members of the pack, while beta males are subordinate and play a helpmate role. No, that's me. That's me. <laughs> you You're the alpha male of this podcast. <laughs> oh, no. An I'm alpha gonna, male I'm, of two. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to pull the curtain back a little bit. We had a false yeah. start on our podcast right. because my right. iPhone took over the uh, podcasting <laughs> software and was recording yeah. out of my phone. So it just sounded horrid. But yeah. I, I just got, I try, uh, as the beta sub- subservient male, uh, I had to get right <laughs> on that. I Google, I fix it all. You know what, I I thought, to pull back the curtain even more, I thought, you know, all right, it's already written, we've done it once. Uh, I thought, well, this would be easier, That I I know what's going to be there. But I was still working on this one. I still got up early this morning and went in there and started rewriting the whole thing again. That's how amazing. Complicated Amazing. this one, you know. Yeah, it's it's touching you. This one's personal. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it is. that's what Mary said. Maybe Mary was like, maybe it's because you're a man. It's like maybe uh-huh. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. This one, I could certainly talk about like masturbation or dining True. it get a lot easier. You know, yeah. that one just you had flows no out. trouble with masturbation. <laughs> that one just shot out. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't keep up with my own hand on writing that <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, but in her, uh, let's see, and the, and the writer Jesse Single says that alpha males are the winners, and the betas are always several laps behind. And then he says, "Don't even ask about the omega males." No, oh, that's me. <laughs> I'm the omega. I'm the omega. But here's what I do. When you start, once you lap me, Mm -hmm. I cut across the track and then everybody thinks I'm in second place. Yeah. Yeah. At a certain point, you get far enough behind, people think you're in the lead again. Yeah. They forget. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And Single says, uh, there are many definitions of alpha male, but the term, as it has most commonly been interpreted recently involves a a level of dominance. Alphas get their way because they know how to, because they know to not back down. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) I know. I know. Jesus. I know. I I back down. I'm going to tell you right now. (laughs) I'm like, you know, what is it? The sunk cost analysis. Sometimes you have to back, or the game theory, you have to back down sometimes. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean, I, I always know when to fold them. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's my a best... lot of trouble if you don't know when to back down that's the problem yeah. i when in doubt i back down <laughs> my uh my kids run the show here at the house so like my my style of parenting is when they ask for something i say no and then they ask yeah. again and i'm like okay <laughs> all right well does it it takes care of aggression and, and anxiety in the household which is yeah that's chimp they're... behavior i think mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Single says, you know, at that comment, like we were just talking about, that like they don't back down. It makes sense on the surface intuitively. Like you think like, yeah, that's why I'm not going to back down or anything. But but as long as you don't think too hard about it, <laughs> like you think a little bit deeper about it, you realize that could cause a lot of problems. Yes. That could cause a lot of problems. Yeah, a lot life. of problems, especially on highways when people cut in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. Then suddenly yeah. firearms are involved. Right, right. 
And and the thing, I mean, as far as that, you know, they always say to to keep traffic flowing better for everybody, you have to learn how to zipper. Meaning, like when you get to the end of the the like the the lane coming on, you don't yeah. immediately go try to cut in. You right. wait till you get to the end, and the people at the already in the lane let you in, and that's yes. how everybody moving. I agree. I hear you, but <laughs> n- people will never do that, which is why no. we need to hire robots to drive us around because right. we just can't do it. Yeah. You can't do it. You got a zipper. Yeah. You got a zipper. <laughs> I love it when people say, oh, uh, 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 robot powered cars are going to be so dangerous, so dangerous. I'm like, have you been on the highway lately? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> have you seen what's going on out there? The, the way it wouldn't be dangerous is if we're all in robot cars. Maybe, yeah, that's, right. maybe that's what it is. That's we're, what's going to happen. We're all yeah. getting, no, we're not, we've lost our privileges to drive as a, as a, as a, <laughs> uh, as a race of primates. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're taking it away. The keys are being removed from us. Right. And uh, hopefully, God, hopefully the robots will zipper. That seems oh, like something you can program. Absolutely. In, in the, the robots will zipper. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait for robot cars. I'm like, bring it, bring it. (laughs) I'm exhausted with these people. Yeah. Driving, driving's tiring. I think. Yeah. Oh, I overheard a conversation between my wife and her cousin who are both natives. Scream furious that people don't realize the diamond lane is the fast lane. (laughs) And And I'm over there thinking it's not the fast lane. The fast yeah. lane's a fast lane. The diamond lane's a diamond lane. Yeah. Fury. Yeah. And that's when I realized we're never going to get along on the roads. We got <laughs> to get these cars off as fast as possible. Uh, so getting back. So actually, though, it does, you know, it does seem like if from a certain perspective that there are people who are extremely successful and always get what they want. It yes. does seem that way. Yes. And, uh, you know, the if problem you're, is that people think it happens. They get their way first, which leads to them getting what they want. But yeah. I don't know. Some of the people I was telling you earlier that I was just running, uh, dealing with a guy who gets everything he wants. I think they get rich first and then they get everything they want. Right, right. I think people have got it backwards. Yeah, I think, you know, we've talked about uh, in another show, we talked about how the free will show. We talked about how there are certain things beyond your control, right? That affects if you're going to be successful or not. And it probably happened when you were first born. Yes, and it has to economic and social, educational things, color of your skin, right? Uh, all of it, right? And so you may not even it may not even have anything to do with you or the fact that you're going out there every day and beating the pavement or right, you know, right and. And you may succeed. And, and actually, from my limited success in, in Hollywood when I first went out there, it was really luck. It was, I mean, yes, I, guess I had good scripts to go with it, but it was luck, really. I just stumbled well, people, into it. Yeah, people think that you it's the idea that's important. It's not the idea. All the ideas yeah. are good. It better yeah. be good. Like, that's a, that's a baseline <laughs> that your idea yeah. has to be good. Yeah. It, it then comes to, well, can you work with people? Can you execute uh can you give these people confidence that you can pull yeah. this off that it's yeah. all of that yeah people hand me a script and say it's a great a great idea and i'm like yeah, yeah. i've got uh, 50 great ideas <laughs> i know i know. <laughs> I always love when people call you up it's like hey i got that you're a writer i got an idea it's yeah, like, it's like yeah, write it yourself right yeah, that's <laughs> it. here's a headline that's the easy part I know. <laughs> I, get, I get thousands <laughs> of ideas every day, you know. Uh, but the thing is, if you're struggling and not succeeding, if you're being bullied or if you're asking women out and they keep saying no, you, you look at those people who seem to have it all and you say, what do they got that I don't got? Right. You know what I mean? And and the answer that comes back a lot of times, at least in certain books and articles and websites is, well, they're alpha males. Right, (laughs) right. They know how to reach out and grab life. Right, right. And (laughs) make it do what they they want. Right. And they don't feel sorry for it because that's what real leaders do. Right. (laughs) You know. It's dog Uh, eat dog. It's it's survival of the fittest. 
Either yeah. you're going to eat or you're going to be eaten. <laughs> are you a lamb or are you a lion or a wolf right. or whatever? There's all kinds of analogies and metaphors that they use to, to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, it's somehow it's all just saying that, you know, aggression, greed, selfishness, whether it be economic or even sexual, because usually it's sexual. It's all about getting laid. Yes. Uh, is in our DNA. And that's the way it was for millions of years. Yes. You can't ignore the real man. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and some of us are alphas and some of us are betas. And if you're not a leader, then you're a follower. It's that simple. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know? Yes. It, uh, yes. And to me, as somebody that grew up reading comic books back in the 70s. Really? Uh, I didn't know you were a comic book a guy. A little bit. I would. I were like Mad Magazine and stuff oh, like well, that. Oh, well, that's not a comic book. That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a humor magazine. Oh, yeah, it, was, it was very sophisticated. That's probably why I didn't laugh a lot of the times. Uh, but the thing is, it, all of this sounds like a repackaging of those old Charles Atlas ads in yes. the back of a comic book where yeah. the, there's like the really uh, muscular guy who's kicking sand in the, mm -hmm. the skinny, <laughs> scrawny guy's face. And then what does he and, do? He goes, yeah. works out, and now he kicks sand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't make the world better. He just becomes an asshole just like the other guy. You know what I mean? Uh, but the idea is that you buy our program, you sp send us money, and uh, and then we'll, we'll tell you how to go lift weights, and then you'll stop being picked on. Is Did you ever order it. that thing? Did you ever order no. that pamphlet? Me neither. <laughs> no, no, Me neither. No. I couldn't get past the sand. I was like, when am I ever going to yeah. be in sand? I was in Kansas. I'm yeah. Like, this doesn't apply to me. <laughs> yeah. They were both in like, like uh, bathing suits out yeah. on the beach or something. It's I like, well, as long as I'm, you know, I'm in a landlocked state that's yeah. flat. I'm not going to have that problem. And I never had that problem down at the Lake, the Ozarks, fortunately. <laughs> it was like down on the river, you know. Oh boy. Um, but the current alpha male incarnation of this same trope of getting sand kicked in your face mm -hmm. is to try to apply actual physical anthropology, genetics, and animal behavior to explain why one guy has a nice car and seems to get laid all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and again, I apologize up front if I keep coming back to like the idea of getting laid. But if you read most of these books or a lot of these books, that has a lot to do with it. <laughs> well, just... and 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 that is the one anthropological fact, right? Like, yeah. uh, we are wired to propagate. That is, that right. is. I mean, if you buy into Darwinism, right? The whole everything is geared towards survival mating. and, and, yeah, and mating. mating. So that part I get, you know. Yeah, it was probably more important when there was only about. 500 of us on the planet. Yes. Yeah. No, <laughs> like everything we've, we've outgrown our purpose. Right. And now we are in a prison of our own making. Yeah. <laughs> Cause our brains uh, are so big. We're so yeah. smart that we're stupid. It's yeah, like we, uh, somebody from Mensa having a Mensa bumper sticker on their car. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but it's a genius yeah. driving the car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's Idiot. always the way. <laughs> yeah, just because <laughs> you may have a high IQ, but there's more to survival in the world as yeah. far as like your social IQ. Your social, yeah. how high is your social IQ? There should be an IQ question like, if you are a, a genius, would you ever put a Mensa sticker on your bumper? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and and then so the thing is, what's what's interesting over the last twenty years as this idea of the alpha male has taken hold and grown in popular culture it's mm. actually fallen out of favor in the behavioral sciences in in like actual biological sciences and animal behaviorists don't so really use the alpha and beta uh yep. anymore so and, and why it's because well it, it's very complicated hierarchical structures in animals are very difficult they're very nuanced and they're yes. very complicated and I'm sure and, they change depending on situation and blah, blah, blah. Right. And they change throughout the year. Sometimes you'll yeah. like certain uh, animals will be like dominant at, during the mating season. Yeah. And then after the mating season, they're not as dominant. No, oh boy. Story of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have a very short mating season. <laughs> I was in charge until we popped those kids out. I went from alpha to omega yeah. real quick. 
Yeah, the, the uh, it, was like my <laughs> it, was dog. Just, it was like my dog. My wife loved our dog, and as soon as she had a yeah. kid, the dog was like she didn't even see him anymore. Wow, she yeah. was just <laughs> that's poor, usually the way. I think. Yeah, it's like poor Billy. Yeah, mm. uh, but you know, as we we've talked about before as well, when it comes to Freudian psychoanalysis, and mm-hmm. people Freudian psychoanalysis has been debunked by by therapists. But yeah, people still hold on to it when it comes to like art criticism or just. Uh, I know just- it's it's been debunked more than anal alien probes. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. Jesus. Yeah, but it's still like you'll hear like with uh, uh, film criticism, people will be like, "Well, you could see at this, he's got this tower in the background, therefore it's you know he's trying to like male dominance." With- I'm not saying he may have that male dominant, but it's like if you can't use Freudian psychoanalysis and say it's valid when it comes to art, when it's not valid when it comes to therapy, uh-huh. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it's good. It's set up. It's set up for that. I think it's a good framework for artistic criticism. Yeah. But, it's part of our, you know, our ver- verbiage and we all know what you're talking about. Right. And yeah, I got that. Yeah. Um, but the thing, it, it kind of comes down when it, with the alpha males, even though mm-hmm. biologists say now, like, no, it's not a, it's not that binary cut and dry. Uh, it's like confirmation bias. Like people have already made up their minds that they want to use that animal hierarchy to justify why why they're being assholes. Basically. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. You know. You're just looking, and, and boy, have I been there. I've written college papers <laughs> where I'm just looking for a footnote to support my argument and not the other way around. Yeah, yeah. And, I'll take and by anything. The way, as it, since you bring it up, if you are going to plagiarize in a college paper, uh, because I had a lot of people when I was grading papers, would just Google, would just Google and cut and paste. Yes. And, and the thing is, you can use other people's work. That's part of what, you know, scholastic research is but you have to credit them you have to credit them and also another thing change the font (laughs) to the the font you were using and remove the link yeah (laughs) that was always i would just type it i would just cut and pay or like just type it exactly what they had and it'd bring up the article and it would always be the first one and always at least go to the second page Go to the second page where the teacher doesn't even laugh. It like, you know, has to look a little for it. <laughs> or they just do the ad, the one that's, yeah. that's sponsored <laughs> at the top. I also always love when uh, students would, um, I, I'd be like, you know, we're out here in, in New Mexico. And suddenly, like in the middle of their paper, they would start using English English spellings like O U R, you know, color O C O L O U R. I'd be like, Uh-oh. "Where are you from again?" <laughs> Somebody went to Google dot UK. <laughs> yeah, so, so just put some effort into it. And better yet, just just credit people. Just credit who you're using. Yeah. Uh, and, so, and if you do credit us, we just sorry to interrupt. <laughs> but if you yeah. do credit us, just to underscore, we would like to if you, we hit a footnote on your paper or whatever. Use the yeah. dagger. Use the dagger. Yeah. We want the dagger uh, zap dingbat. Right. And send us yeah. a copy of the paper. Send us yeah. a copy of the paper. Yeah. yeah. For, yeah, please. I don't for know. God we're sakes. desperate enough. We, we would even probably come out and give a, a presentation at your call. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a back massage. <laughs> hey, now. Hey, now. Watch it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but I was thinking if we're going to look at ma- alpha maleness, as an mm. actual biological reality. Right. I think we need to look at it as an animal behavioralist would. Okay. And and I'm sure we've all encountered alpha males out in the wild, meaning <laughs> at work, <laughs> at oh, airports. Okay. Yeah. Football games. Oh, uh, on the yeah. on the highway. Uh, on the uh, highway. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're at everywhere. Gun, ra- gun ranges. <laughs> that goes without saying at gun ranges. Uh, when you're getting Lasix done. Yeah, really? oh wait, maybe not that really? one. I don't know. Maybe not that one. At the gym? Do you see at the, at the oh, gym? Oh, at the gym. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can mm-hmm. usually, their call is is the the mansplaining. <laughs> yes. You can hear the call of the alpha male. Yes. That mansplaining coming across oh. the, you know, from the yeah. distance. You can see their legs parting and you can hear the <laughs> scrotum ungluing from their thighs. Arms akimbo. They'll have arms akimbo. That's the uh, 
the stance, and then they let loose with a long, shrill, <laughs> shrill mansplain. Well, you know what you need to do. <laughs> you know. uh, and the thing is, even billionaires, like you have billionaires now, like taking mixed martial arts and like challenging each other to fights. No, that's good. That's good, <laughs> that's good for all of us. Yeah. Like, Get up and make your, a... go, go up in your rockets. Go in your rockets. <laughs> yeah, that's go, fine by me. Go have a crash up, smash up derby up in, the, in space uh, with your rockets. Yeah. Like, yeah. Get a, Take get some with ra- you. Get your race car going. That's good. You should do that. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. but I'm like, you, you're already a billionaire. We already have to buy all your shitty products. I know. Why, why, why do we have to watch you wrestle around with some other asshole I that's know. up in there? I wish they'd get into knife throwing, you know, and I mean like the magician version where one of them's on a wheel and you yeah, spin the yeah. wheel and the other Russian one. Russian roulette. You, Russian roulette. Yeah. <laughs> really show us. Really show yeah. us. You like now in, uh, there's a reality show. Yeah. Deer yeah, Hunter. That. Billionaires playing Russian roulette. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> this may be our last episode. This may be our last episode. <laughs> Uh, and, and the thing is usually, you know, the alpha male is loud, demanding, like we say, Mm -hmm. unapologetic, lecherous, Mm -hmm. uncompromising, Mm -hmm. and they seem to know everything. Mm -hmm. And, and the first thing I usually say when I see an alpha male out in public is I want to say, you're trying too hard. (laughs) You're you're just, you're just trying too hard. Okay. It's not that hard to be successful and and do what you want to do. Take those sunglasses off the back of your neck. (laughs) And put them in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, I had a friend of mine who uh, was had borrowed a motorcycle. It was on the motorcycle, and he he was wearing a like one of those little helmets. Yeah, and he was out cruising around, like feeling really cool. He told me this story, and he was laughing about it. And he pulls up uh, next to a cop on a motorcycle, and you know he's just sitting there, and it's a Harley, and it's going, and and he says the cop says something to him. He's like, "What? What'd you say?" And the cop says. Your helmet's on backwards. <laughs> <laughs> he said he just rode home. He just rode home and put the yeah. motorcycle away. He goes just immediately sell it. <laughs> it's like you're trying too hard. You're trying too hard. That's great. Uh, but I think some people are, you know, actually trying to will themselves to success. Yeah. And and believe me, I've been there. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling well, you. Well, it's all we've got. All we yeah. think we've got. You know, that self-will, it's really counterintuitive to to bend and right. adapt and lean back. Like, that just doesn't, it, it feels like you're not doing anything. You need to feel right, like you're doing right. something. Like, you're, I'm digging this ditch and it's gonna pay off. Yeah, yeah. It's so depressing. It's so, day after day after day, it is depressing yeah. uh, when things aren't going your way. It, but, yeah. but I'm telling you, you can will yourself to keep trying. Which really yeah. persistence is probably the best thing for the yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, but I can will as much as I want, but I'm not going to play for the Chiefs anymore. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not going Wait, to. Well, no, you, I would put you, <laughs> you'd be a great safety. A walk on? A walk on? Yeah. <laughs> you're fast. I'd put you on the kick on special teams because you're a crazy motherfucker. Uh, you know, we just put a helmet on you and go get him. Uh, just I, I just hang out down by the end zone. I wouldn't run around very much. <laughs> You're right. Do Good. I, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, but the thing is, you know, if you could will yourself, like we said, will yourself to success, there would be millions of other people also willing themselves to success. And then you're at a new baseline. It's like what we're right. talking about. Then somebody's right. got to really will. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if, if, it, if it worked, we'd all be doing it. Right. I have a friend at work who says, uh, he has a great saying. He goes, if the minimum wasn't enough, it wouldn't be the minimum. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well said. Well said. Yeah, just do, just stay, right above. It. Stay close to that guy. Yeah, and that's what he's talking about. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he's actually a former military, like a former uh, <laughs> officer mm-hmm. in the military. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but the thing is, uh, some people have reached the conclusion that there is a biological reason for success and failure. And to be successful, they say, you must free your inner chimpanzee. Oh. <laughs> you must unlock your aggressive and oh, selfish geez. inner alpha nature. And then go rip people's faces <clears throat> off. Because that's what right. chimpanzees do. Right. 
Right. They'll just snap and rip your face off. Like literally they get, we've talked about this. They <laughs> yeah. get in there and get under your eyelids and like rip, literally rip your face off. Right. Right. Oh, and there, God, there's also, terrifying. they have the canine teeth, but they, yeah, that's what people say. There's also a lot of infanticide <laughs> with chimpanzees, which people oh. don't like to talk about at that point. Uh, what do you mean? They kill people's babies. They kill uh, other chimps' babies, yeah, for oh my part God. of the dominance thing. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But, but the thing is, what people will say who subscribe to this, uh, this way of thinking is, they'll say, like, look, we are all just hairless chimpanzees, and mm. this is in my DNA. This is my instinct to be aggressive and dominant. Mm-hmm. I am just being true to my natural state. And... Mm. And then in other words, what they're saying is like, I'm a selfish jerk, but that's how male chimps are are in the jungle. So therefore, you just have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people. This with, is who we someone, are. Anytime someone says like, that's just who I am. I don't care what they're saying. They're like, that's just who I am. You have to deal with it. And it probably means they're being an asshole. Right. Yes, of course. They're justifying <laughs> some behavior that. <laughs> yeah. You know, sorry. That, yeah. When you hear that, you got to be like, okay, what did they just do? (laughs) (laughs) That's your tip off. That's your tip off. Uh Uh-oh. But the thing is, I have a few problems with this. First of all, uh, I I say to the, or I'd like to say to the people, you're not a chimp. (laughs) Right. like, first of all. Yeah, guess what? You're hairless. That's a big difference by the, just that. Maybe there's other big differences. Yeah. <laughs> and secondly, you're not in the jungle. You know what yes. I mean? You're you're at my house having dinner, basically. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We've created this false uh environment and it's yeah. just even if it were true, it's not appropriate anymore. Right, right. Yeah. And also, even from a chimp sociological standpoint or from chimp society, there's a lot of politicking that goes on for chimp dominance in a really for, yeah like they'll make alliances with each other really there's a, yeah there's a lot of grooming there's a lot of grooming that goes on back and yeah, forth i've seen that they pick uh they <laughs> like to pick the whatever the lice out of right this. right which you know if i had a hairy back I, i'd yeah. pick lice out of your back if you promise to pick it oh, out of mine i would yeah definitely because that's that's how they make the alliances that's how you're showing mm. that you're you're close to somebody and everybody the, benefits. It's symbiotic because lice is a good source of protein. As you right. can see, they eat it. They eat them. Let's do it, man. Let's yeah. do it. We should I don't have, have any we lice. Should, <laughs> we should, let's do, in addition to the Yeti Love Convention, let's do like where we, we take a huge group of people, our listeners, <laughs> and we go out and, and camp, but yet we act like apes. For oh, that's good. <laughs> For three yeah. days. It's three like days. cosplay, cosplay, but as <laughs> yeah. apes. I love it. Yeah. As if we could we could uh work my my Geico Caveman uh, right. uh status right. into it. Geico Caveman invites you to cosplay right. as apes. Yeah, That's let's do that. that. All yeah. right. Nobody take that. <laughs> Wait for the email, everybody. Wait for the yeah, email. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let but, us but be the know, alpha males on setting that thing up. Yeah, if we if we ended up being the uh, the like way down on the list, you know that would be bad. We're just like cleaning up after everybody after three yeah. days. Yep. Um, but the thing is, you know, chimps they may fight their way to the top mm-hmm. of their group, but once yeah. they get up there, there's a few things that they have to do, and one is they have to maintain order, meaning they have to diffuse the aggression and anxiety of the other chimps. Uh-huh. Uh, and they also use, they will like politic up at the top. They'll like go to other chimps and try to, you know, develop relationships with them to help them God. maintain their position. It's like survivor, you know? Yeah. yeah, it really is. And, and the thing is, this usually applies only to your, your troop, only to your group of chimps. Right. So it, like you never see in, in the wild. Like a chimp <laughs> going out of its way to go like shove a zebra around, you know what I mean? To kind of show it who's boss. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. The lion, the king of the jungle, doesn't need to go out and prove himself. He just is. Right. He just is. Yeah. He's, He's like Sinatra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like exactly. Sinatra, yeah. He doesn't have to do a damn thing. Yeah, but but again, it's kind of like when you see an alpha male or somebody just in there like berating the barista 
or berating the the person at the uh, fast food restaurant working at the counter. The, it's like this isn't even in your group. What are you doing? <laughs> Why I know. are you trying to increase your prestige here? You know yeah. what I mean. Let everybody do the zipper. Let's just take time. The, the <laughs> zipper approach to traffic should be applied yeah. to almost everything. Let him go. Then I go. Yeah. Then you go. Then we all die. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We do that for 80 years and then we're, and then we're dead. We, we don't have exactly. to worry about it. And then yeah. our kids do it and then they die because it's all pointless. <laughs> You're actually right, though. I mean, because the zipper is all about like you got to be aware of what's happening around right. you. Sometimes right. you slow down. Sometimes you speed up. But and ultimately, here's the thing. going around the zipper doesn't get you anywhere. Doesn't no. doesn't get you anywhere. No, it just no. pisses people off and it confusion and it just yeah. it's, uh, we slows need robot everybody cars. down. <laughs> Scientists get on the robot cars immediately. <laughs> Jesus, what did, did we God get? A, did we get a sponsor from robot yeah, cars? Let's really bring step it, it up. up. I want <laughs> robot cars tomorrow. I got to get places. Yeah. I want to get to the yeah. Rite Aid faster. <laughs> Uh, but you know what? And again, when I when I think about all the books that are out there about becoming an, an alpha male and about how anybody can do it is basically yeah. what they're saying. Right. And again, my idea is like, well, how much real science and biology is in this? If, right. if everybody can do everybody can learn this, everybody can do it. You right. Know? Right. And and it's like the people who, who you know, tell you like. Send me a hundred dollars and I'll tell you how to make a million dollars. It's like, I just told you, I just told yeah. you how to do it. Yeah. You know? Now, you know, you get 10,000 goofballs <laughs> to send you a C note and you're there. Right. Right. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Just find 10,000 people stupider than you <laughs> and you're home free. And, and I think, you know, there's a lot of money in the self-help industry. And to me, I see this more as kind of like a self self-help sort of thing where right. you know and they say that yeah i looked it up and there was like in 2023 they thought 11 billion to 13 billion dollars in the self-help industry so so there's Jesus. a lot of money to be made about people <laughs> again going back to charles atlas telling the skinny guy how not to get sand kicked in his face yeah you know what i mean maybe maybe we should write a self-help book on how to be an omega man you know <laughs> yeah, how to do <laughs> how to tone it down a bit. Yeah. How to, how to follow. Down. How to follow. <laughs> how to work your way down. Mate. Sure. Sure. It's like easy mm. if you're good looking to make your way to the top. But how about yeah. you? Yeah. How about if you good looking guy, deep voice, tall. How do you get down to the bottom where everybody's treating you like crap? That's that's right. <laughs> it's easy to be the mouth. It's a lot harder to be the anus. <laughs> that's right. That's the book. Let's bring that out there. Uh, I did read where, when I was doing this, that they have found, you know, like certain things do, they're social cues, social dominance cues. So like mm. in our culture, for example, uh, people who are tall usually have a little more prestige. Socially. Sons of people, bitches. <laughs> I yeah. know people think that they're, they're more honest somehow. Yeah. I don't know how, if you're tall, you're honest, but, but that's, and then they say, if you have a deep voice. If you have a deep voice of people. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, they call it the, what the Barry. What happens in- yeah, the Barry White effect. Like a man barely. Yeah. Uh, and then the other, if you're good looking, you know, but that's pretty obvious. That's pretty obvious right. to me. That's why I've gotten as far as I have. I'm, <laughs> I'm handsome. Yeah. Just look at you. That's why we look need to at put me. you out there. Yeah. Just look at me. <clears throat> We need to take some uh, glamour shots of you and put them on the website, <laughs> on the Facebook. You want to be successful? Just look like me. <laughs> That's my self-help book. It's very, It's like a kid's book. It's like 10 pages. <laughs> 10 thick pages. So We start with the toes and we end with the hair. <laughs> we just work our way up. I had... Uh, I had a friend of mine. I've actually known a couple people like this in my life. Uh, but their method, quote unquote method, with the ladies mm-hmm. was that they would just put it out to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were just always, uh, always sexual, always some innuendo, always some like g- g- ogling, googling, you know. And the it's, idea it's was like the, equiv- the equivalent of using huge nets to trap dolphins. <laughs> Pretty soon you're going to get one. Yeah. 
<laughs> I always say it was like putting out flyers, you know, advertising flyers. Right, right. <laughs> There's a 4% return on it usually. <laughs> so, and they would say that that's what it was. I just put it out to everybody. So if you put it out to 200 women, like eight of them may may go home with you. Right. Or something. Yeah. It's the carpet bombing approach. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. Speaking of flyers, remember that job you had where you had to break in, walk into uh, office office oh, places yeah. and yeah. yeah. Oh, that was <laughs> that awful. Was... I hated that job. We, uh, I don't know if I've talked about it on here before or not. I don't but, think so. But my job was they put me in a suit and I had to go and it, they were for knife sets, like flyers for knife sets, and they dropped <laughs> me off at an office with another guy. But I had a boss. Okay, yeah. So I was working under him and he gave me some flyers and he goes, OK, just go throughout the building and try to work your way into the lunch rooms and put these flyers in there because wow. they had his number on it. Or like, you know, put, yeah. type in this number and they put operators such and such. And then he would get the, the sale for that. Got it. Yeah. So I did that. Uh, I got up to a floor, you know, I'm wearing a suit and I have all these flyers and a briefcase and everything. And I'm like, this is, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> so I just, I go in the bathroom on one of the floors and I just stuff all the flyers in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I come downstairs and, and I wait down the lobby and pretty soon he comes out and he goes, uh, hey, how, how'd it go? And I go, well, oh, it was great. <clears throat> Everything went fine. He goes, you put all those flyers out? And I was like, yeah, yeah. I put, pass them all out. All <laughs> You put them in. The, you put them in uh, in the in the lunch rooms, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I put them in the lunch room. He holds up all the flyers. <laughs> <laughs> he had got in and got got them out of the bathroom that I thrown away. He, he'd been washing yeah. his hands and put the paper towel in the in the thing. Goes, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, but he, he was knew. the alpha. He was the alpha. He really was. Right. He yeah. had driven. He had driven us there. So there was no way for me to get back to my car. I had to ride oh. home with him. That oh, was a god. Oh god. <laughs> it was horrible. It was horrible. But I, I I was like, I, I can't do this job. You know, I yeah. can't go in there. Yeah. But it was amazing. He would walk in and just again, maybe this is the alpha. He would walk in like in a suit with a briefcase and it just walked by the receptionist and yeah. nobody would question him who he was. Yeah. He would wait, work his way back to the, <laughs> back to the break room mm -hmm. and, and then just pass all this shit out back there. All these. Well, yeah, that's, 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 that's called criminal behavior. <laughs> you know? Yeah. He's a sociopath. Yeah. He doesn't give a crap what people right, think. Right. 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 That's what the, so. uh, that's what the alpha male really is. <laughs> so, uh, but, but, you know, getting back to our topic, I would say, you know, there's a, a difference between using self-help or communication techniques uh, to make yourself more comfortable in social situations mm -hmm. and using pseudoscience or cherry picking scientific facts to explain you being an asshole mm -hmm. <laughs> at, at Thanksgiving or or to say that, you know, you mistreating women is just you uh, expressing your seven million year old dna or something yeah. like that yeah it's an excuse not to <clears throat> not to right. look at yourself yeah right and i would say also <clears throat> it's a very slippery slope because once you start saying that there's a biological or genetic reason that i personally am superior to other people it doesn't take much to start saying maybe i should just hang out with other superior individuals mm. and then from there you get into maybe my race is superior yes to I, I knew <clears throat> that's where you were heading it all leads <laughs> to fascism at some point it, yeah yeah and i would say probably uh i i couldn't find any articles talking about this but but it's interesting that in the past 20 years as we've seen the uh elevation of or like the popularization of the alpha male philosophy mm -hmm. we've also seen a, a, a resurgence of white white supremacy and, mm -hmm. and fascism throughout the world strong man right right and because you know alpha maleness and its emphasis on biological and genetic hierarchies uh, as opposed to it just being like a, a arbitrary cultural construction right uh is tailor-made for fascism yeah Basically, yeah. it's kind of conditioning people to to believe in that fascist hierarchy mm -hmm. that, like, as if it's a biological fact, right. not just that it's a choice that people make. This is just and, who I am. 
Right, right. And in fascism, you know, you always have to have a, an, a, an other, somebody else. There always has to be somebody below you. That's the yeah. whole thing. That's the purpose I serve. <laughs> well, 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 the thing is, you know, once once you get rid of the, like the the obvious lowers, you know, like like Jewish people or homosexuals or whatever, you still have to have a lower in that system, and yes. so that's why at a certain point, fascism starts feeding upon itself because even even the fascists have to have other fascist. You know, at that point, they start picking the lower prestige fascist to to kick out. You know. Yep. 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 And the snake <clears throat> eats its own tail. <coughs> right. Right. And the, at the, you know what? There was a time where there were even Jewish fascists back in the twenties. Wow. And and then back in the forties when they started deporting all the the Jews from Italy, you know, there were people that were like, "But but I'm a fascist." It's like, well, no. It, then you understand. <laughs> you you got to go. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. Yep. Uh, and and if you remember, John, back in the 90s, I wrote a play called uh, The Rise and Fall of Benito Mussolini is Told by Circus Clowns. Highly recommend giving that a read, everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great play. <clears throat> uh, but, you know, Mussolini was like supposed to be an alpha male. He was the man of action. Yes. And uh, and fascists love that man of action. You yes. Know, they love the idea of the man of action. Yeah. The guy who doesn't think, he just acts. You right. Know? Uh, he may not know what he's doing <laughs> or what he's talking about, but but he acts. He's an alpha male, and that's yes. what alpha males do. Yeah. And and Mussolini had to give you an example of it. He had an office that was like 120 feet long, <laughs> and was like 30 or 40 feet high. It was an old Renaissance palace. And what, what did he, they use? A hallway? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that'll be my office. But but it, but yeah, you know, it's yeah. a hallway. We go, won't be able to get anywhere. I don't care. Just put my desk down at the end of that thing. Yeah. But that's what he would do. He would sit in his desk, and when people came in, he would make them walk that entire distance. That's so as- comical. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I, I would I be know. laughing. if I, yeah. I mean, I, I'd be scared because I'd be in Benito Mussolini's office. But yeah. I, inside, I'd be, this is the most ridiculous. It's like a cartoon. Right, right. And that, that's the point of the play. The play, play was told by circus clowns because you find it funny, you find it comical, and then the more it goes on, you just realize, oh, people are losing their lives here. People are right. being killed because of this. It's not right. so funny anymore. How right. do we stop it? It won't yes. stop. You know? Right, right, mm. right, right, right. But, but that's how it is. It is like it was comical. Like it, it, that's what we did. I would never work for somebody like that. And the point is, you had to work for somebody like that. Yeah. Uh, the other thing he would, it, it was all about sex. And so people would always say that like every woman that came to his office, he was having sex with in his office, you know, because wow. again, fascists are all about manly, you know, well, if, it, if that were truly the case, he should be having sex with anything that comes in his office. Right. Right. Men, <laughs> women, <laughs> animals, Who knows? Who knows? whatever. Yeah. Benito will fuck anything. <laughs> yeah. But he's it, an alpha but it, man. But it wasn't that, you know what I mean? It was actually, yeah. it was just women because culturally, just women. Yeah. culturally, that's what the, the Italians wanted. You know, they wanted to have a guy who was like big ladies, man. You know? Yes, yes. Uh, and I just want to say that there's there's no, from my research on fascism, there's no individual freedom in fascism. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we, there's only one leader, and in a fascist state, we all do what that one leader tells us to do. Right. And and I want all the people who want to think about like, well, the fascism's not so bad. You don't get to do what you you want to do. <laughs> okay. right. If you love individual freedom, fascism is not the 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 kind of uh, system for you. Is what I'm going to well, say. Well, I think that the thinking is is okay. I'm going to turn over my power to this father figure who's going right. to fix everything, and then he's going to turn it back over to to right. to us. And that never just happens. never happens. Yeah. No. No. And and there's also, I mean, why do you think like people like Hitler and Mussolini had to start killing other fascists and, and Nazis is because if you get too popular yeah. or if you start doing your own thing, you yeah. got to go. You got to yeah. go. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and whatever it is, I don't like, I don't like people telling me what to do. <laughs> just that is true. You do not. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I've I've hmm. asked you to pass me the salt, and you've punched me in yeah. the face. Yeah, screw you. Yeah, screw you. I can't Get your believe own salt. it. Get Jesus. your own damn salt. I just needed the salt. 
What am I, a salt shaker? What am I, a lazy Susan? Uh, the other thing, <laughs> the other thing I want to say is uh, in light of what happened in Kansas City this week, and that's Ugh. having a gun does not make you an automatic alpha. Okay, yeah. and and some people buy a gun. I have nothing against guns, but some people buy a gun and suddenly think that they're untouchable. Nobody's mm-hmm. going to ever pick on me again. Mm-hmm. And and I just want to say part of being an alpha from a chimp perspective is, again, maintaining order, maintaining that like diffusing situations, diffusing aggression. It's not right. always on from a chimp, an alpha. Right. Chimp. Right. And, and the, the skill is knowing when to take it to the next level in those mm-hmm. situations. Like if, if you're having a confrontation with somebody, is it worth taking their life? at that point? Or is this just a, a verbal argument and, and it needs to end at that? Or is it just a, a physical argument and it just needs to end at that? But by that time, their frontal hmm. cortex is flooded. You know, it's like you're, yeah. you're, you're, yeah. you're, you, you, you can't even process anything. Yeah. Which and is the argument problem. against guns because yeah. it's like, yeah, the gun doesn't kill people, but people go crazy enough where they can't stop themselves. Even right. sane people. Yeah. They just, yeah. they just snap, you know? It's, um, yeah. I remember one time I was walking home in Venice uh, along Abbott Kinney Boulevard and, you know, Venice at that time, I don't know if it still is, but it was questionable. It was sketchy out there. And so you had, never knew what was going to happen. And I was outside the Brig, which was a dive bar at that time. Now it's like a trendy I, bar, I think. I drank many a beer at the Brig. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> the Brig was great at that time. Yeah. Uh, and there was just some guy who just wanted to start shit with me outside outside the brig, and hey, just was, you, yeah, yeah. Boy, you asshole, yeah, yeah. It was that sort of situation, and mm-hmm. you know, I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to go home. It wouldn't let it go. Wouldn't let it go. And and I kind of blacked out. And I remember, like at one point, I had him up against a car with my my hand on his throat. Mm. And I remember you, you're, you've got, you're, you've, you've been trained in uh, martial arts. <clears throat> like you could have killed, you could kill him. Right. And, and that moment came across me or it came to me in that moment of like, is this where I could kill him? I could kill him right now. I could collapse his throat and it would be over. Jesus. And, and the real skill in whether having a gun or in martial arts, I think is being able to tell what the situation requires you know what i mean so right but but i mean hmm. thank god you didn't do it yeah i i think you could you know i wonder how many people out of a hundred would have killed him you know right yeah or if you have a gun in that so you don't have that in a gun it's over you know what i mean instead of just it's like texting i hate texting if you're really trying to communicate anything nuanced because you send that shit and it's done it's too easy Right. We knew right. we, we made stuff too efficient. We need a little break there. Like a little, I have a friend who has a 20 minute timer on his emails. So he sends an email, but it doesn't go out for 20 minutes. Really That's pretty smart. Yeah. Yeah. So he can it's go back genius. in and double check yeah. it. Or... Yeah. Be like, wait, I don't want to send that. I was pissed. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. Well, that's kind of good. That is. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of a good idea. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's the difference between like being drunk and throwing haymakers at somebody outside in the parking lot that, that don't land yeah. and being drunk and shooting a gun at somebody and missing. Yeah. And then yeah. everybody else gets killed. Everybody else dies because of yeah. your, your bullshit. You know what I mean? What so, happened in Kansas city. That's right, exactly right. what happened. So I just want to say my, my heart and sympathy goes out to everyone that was affected and injured Ugh. and killed. Ugh. In that situation in Kansas City, I just Ugh. really feel for everybody. Yeah. Um, but anyway, going on, would you you say you wouldn't consider yourself an alpha male? God no, God no. <laughs> Only in my worst moments. You no, know, I've learned the hard way that it's better yeah. to bend like bend with the wind. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm like a weed. <laughs> How about in uh, certain situations like improv? Like you're very good at improv. Do you oh, that's feel true. yourself? Yeah, up on stage, I'm the I'm the kind of guy that I wish I were in the rest. You know, or or yeah. you know, when I'm in my my sort of ego mind, 
Uh, yeah. yeah, on stage, I'm free. I I take charge. I I can do all kinds of stuff. But then off stage, I'm like, what? You can't pay me? That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out to the car now. There's a uh, in improv. There's always like there are like some guys that try to bully everybody on the yeah. stage. Yeah, they you steamroll. Know. They call them steamrollers, or they they did in my day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do you do that? And do you do that? Are you a steamer? No. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it, it's a tool in a toolbox. Sometimes, you yeah. know, you look over and your partner's just like, I don't know. They, you know, they're kind of yeah, yeah. deer in the headlights and need need to need a little break. But yeah. uh I guess I do I can't. That that's like a, a the darker side of my improv is when I do that. You can take, take it. Over. You're like a Mahomes. Yeah. You you can take over the game and just <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like will it Mahomes. to happen. <laughs> Only he's in front of you know two million people, and I'm in front of twenty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about when you were producing? Did you, did you feel like you were a producer? You were a star of a couple of shows. Did you did it go to your head? Did you feel yes, like for hey, sure, I'm a- for sure? And I, I remember I thought you know you'd be have a crew of a hundred people you know and and yeah. and you're in charge or me and you know my partner and yeah. uh, I remember thinking like. At first, I thought, oh, it's all of their job to work to bring my idea, to execute my idea. Right. right. You know, and yeah. and then I kind of had a um, a moment, you know, where I realized, no, that's not it at all. It's my yeah. job to create uh, in a way that utilizes what they do best. Right. You know, so like we realized they we had this amazing costume department. So we started writing to them. Cause, oh, you know, that's great. Yeah. yeah. And and that goes for all the departments, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All of them. So you find out what you, what people do best and then you adapt to them so that, right. and that makes right. the best work really. That, that's a good leader. That's a good leader. It's a good leader. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. stumbled into it, but yeah. But it's uh, just, you- it, for me, it was just the most effective. It was just like, oh, it's better. So let, yeah. and, we, and we're not being dicks to each other. Right. <laughs> to win. Well, that's win. great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Were you ever a prima donna on that show like you are in this one? Or are you? Yeah. I'm <laughs> like I am here. Um not really. No. Yeah. I, I have so much too much self loathing to be a prima yeah. donna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it keeps me in check. Uh and before we move on to the biology of alphaness, I, I just want to say what once more about uh just acting like an asshole in public. Yeah. And and again, this is take it from a guy who has been an asshole in public. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to mm-hmm. tell you, uh, I've never heard anyone say ever, oh, I love Fred. He's such an ass. I want to be just <laughs> like him. You know what I mean? Or I, yeah. I love Craig. He's such an asshole. Why can't we all more people be like him? Or yes. something? You know what yeah. I mean? You never yeah. hear that. So no. just be aware of that. Yeah. Okay, John. So just moving on to the biology of of humans and chimps. Now, you and I in our uh, topic on teach, teaching chimps to talk. Yes, we talked about the genetic similarities between humans and chimps. Yes, and one of the things people will always say is like, "Well, chimps and humans are ninety eight percent the same." Yes, they have the same DNA. Now, we also have ninety eight percent the same DNA as bonobos. Ah, the bonobos. Yes. (laughs) We'll talk about the bonobos. Right. But the thing is, a lot of that similar DNA is just the operating system. You know what I mean? It's really not what distinguishes us from from chimps and bonobos. Yeah, I mean, you just look at you put 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 you next to a chimp. You guys don't look very much alike. (laughs) Yeah, I don't have any hair, at least. (laughs) Right. Well, that's a biggie. Uh, and the thing is, though, you know, people will say that they'll use that analogy. They'll throw out that 98 percent the same to kind of uh, explain how they behave when they're yeah, being ch- aggressive or like, this is just natural. I'm just a chimp. Deep down, yeah. I'm just a chimp. Yeah. 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 And in the book, uh, you know, Jonathan Marks, what it means to be 98 percent chimp, which we talked about before. Yeah. He says that, you know, yeah, 98%, it's it's similar, but it's that difference. It's the DNA that's not the same. Yeah. That gives Tur- us like 
bipedalism, a large prefrontal cortex, Mm -hmm. a brain, allows us to be in large societies. Turns out that 2% is a lot. There's a lot of stuff in that 2%. Right, exactly. Mm. So when we say that, it's like, yeah, but that difference, that that difference in DNA, those 2% or whatever, that's what makes all, that's why we're on the outside of the cage and they're on the inside of the cage. Any beer drinker knows uh, the difference (laughs) between 6% alcohol and 8% alcohol. It's a big difference. Huge difference. difference. Huge difference. (laughs) And, and so, you know, it's like, yes, we're like chimps and we're like bonobos, but we're also very, very different. But what I find interesting is it's that similarity, that part that kept us from from evolving, that kept us from becoming, you know, getting to where we are. That's the part that people who go after alpha maleness want to use to run their life. They want yeah. to use the chimp part that kept yeah. chimps, you know. <laughs> yeah. The part of us that's the same. Yeah. Right, right. And, and if anything, you want to use the part that's different than chimps, you know, for, for us. That's how we got to where we're at right now. Right. But even the part that, that, <clears throat> that they want to go after has been disproven. It's not, yeah. it's much more complicated than just being oh, yeah. a dick, a dickhead. Yeah. <clears throat> like even like alpha, like, like alpha wolves, for example, for years, people thought alpha wolves uh, fought with each other to maintain their, their structure, their hierarchy. And what happened is once they started putting in uh, like radio collars on wolves and they could track them, they realized a wolf pack is a family. Like mm. there's a mom and dad and then siblings underneath. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So there's really no, this idea of like the alpha wolves always fighting the, to maintain their position. No, it's just a parent. <laughs> it's just a dad. It's just a dad. I, well, I don't know what happened with my family. Because the kids are in charge of our operation. Yeah, maybe you. We should do some study on you. Put a radio collar on you. Yeah. Let's put radio (laughs) collars on everybody and just see what we all are really about. Yeah. That's why I want the chip. Put the chip in my head. Let's get, let's yeah. figure out, let's take a good hard look at ourselves. Download that data. See what you've yep. <laughs> yep. you been up to. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> Back and forth from Starbucks. That's all it oh, is. Look at it. Look at God. his range. Look at his oh. range. Well, now he's flossing. Yeah. <laughs> we should put a camera. We'll do that. We'll, we'll put collars on you and me and people can track us and see what we're doing. <laughs> That's a great idea. Uh, so anyway, in uh, Marlene's book, uh, Marlene Zook's book, Sexual Selections, again, she says, you know, th- the problems with selectively choosing certain animal behaviors and uh, applying them to humans is that we cherry pick. We cherry pick those, that data to fit what we already want to believe. Well, hell what, yeah. That's yeah. Facebook. You know, yeah. That's what's gotten us to this place. <laughs> So, so we end up also, you know, we misperceive what's, what's an animal behavior. And, and, you know, we look at chimps, for example, and we say, oh, look at those chimps there. That, that's what we do. That's just like my boss at work or something, mm, you know, like yeah. he's chasing people around. It's like, well, right. that's a chimp behavior. And on the exterior, there's a similarity, but it's not exactly the same as what your boss is doing. That's like when your cousin says something like, well, study show. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh no. Yeah. The world's flat. Studies show yeah. the world's flat. Yeah. Okay. All right. Have you ever seen it? Have you ever yeah. seen it round? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Zook also makes a good point. She goes, she, you know, there's other animals like baboons and even bluebirds will do things that, that are similar to Blue humans. Bluebirds? <laughs> yeah. You know, they walk on two legs, oh, they use yeah. tools. They do? Uh, bluebirds well, they use, use tools? Well, certain birds will use like a stick, for example, uh-huh. to open uh-huh. up something. Oh, and they vomit their food into their kids. It's <laughs> like me. That's what I did. Yeah. That's how I got my kids yeah. to where they are. We saved a lot of money on baby food. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to dinner over there. That's all. Yeah. That's, all. That's yeah. how you try to feed me, too. Yeah. All right. It's not pretty, but it's a good source of protein. It's yeah. Good. And I'm still like, well, it's still barbecue. It's still barbecue. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, but the thing is, you know, we don't go around trying to like, like guinea pigs have a hierarchy too. We don't go around saying, I'm going to live like a guinea pig, <laughs> for example, you know. Um, oh, no. And then guinea- the, the other, 
Yeah, guinea pigs other... seems like kind of a nice life. They what do they do? <laughs> they just sleep, sleep and squeal and get up and get a drink of water and oh, well, that's yeah. not far from me anyway. <laughs> uh, but you know, and then when people want to talk about like, well, that's what chimps do, and I'm just a chimp. I'm like, well, right. what about bonobos? Oh, here we go. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite because... in the. And now we're talking primatology, right? Right. Here we go. We're going everywhere on this one. Like yeah. Uh, because bonobos, remember, we have exactly the same DNA percentage with bonobos that we do with chimps. Right. However, uh, Franz de Waal, who's a primatologist, who's done a lot of work on chimps and, and bonobos, uh, he says, you know, one of the things that that is interesting about bonobos is it's a female centered egalitarian primate species. That substitutes sex for aggression. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, yeah. who's at the top of the evolutionary chain? I mean, that sounds I know. lovely. I know. Me too. Me too. Oh, Especially just, like if, you, if it's all about vote sex. For women. Yeah, let's just vote for women, everybody, and have sex. Come on. Yeah. That sounds yeah. great. And he goes on, he says, it is impossible to understand the social life of the bonobo without attention to its sex life. The two are inseparable, whereas in most other species, sexual behavior is a fairly distinct category. In the bonobo, it has become an integral part of social relationships. Hmm. And not just between males and females, bonobos engage in sex virtually every partner combination. Male, oh male, male, female, yeah. and female, female. It's on. <laughs> the bonobos, it's, it's just a big old orgy. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing he says, when female bonobos arrive in a new group in the wild, their entrance is accompanied by lots of sex. <laughs> <laughs> so they fuck their way into the group. Right, right. Oh, uh, lovely. That yeah. sounds fantastic, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and, and inevitably, he says, even whether in the wild or in captivity, uh, a bonobo group or troop is always ruled by an, an older matriarch. It's an older mm. female. It, and even though the males are larger than than the females and bonobos, just like in in chimps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so the reason I bring this up is if you're going to try to find use a chimp to justify your behavior in the mm. world and try to say that it's genetically and biologically uh, ordained that you act the way you do, you're aggressive, you're selfish, you're uh, misogynist because of your chimp DNA. My question is, you can't forget the bonobo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you can't forget that's the bonobo. That's right. Yeah. You but, know. But the thing is, people don't want to bring up the bonobo uh, because it doesn't fit. Again, like I say, it's that, that confirmation bias. It doesn't fit what they the way they already want to believe and the way they already want to behave. Right. Right. The bonobos get away get away with the bonobos is like the nerds ruling the world. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's what would happen. <laughs> I would love it. I mean it, I, and honestly, oh. it, the re the reason I bring it up is is really just to say you can't apply animal behavior to human behavior. You just yeah. can't do it. Yeah. And yeah. if you try to do that, just realize that that's a cultural that's a cultural thing you're doing. You're just picking and choosing things in an animal that kind of looks like what a human does. Right. Like when you see your dog walk on its back legs and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> try to open the door or something. It's it's not it's not being human. It's it's just doing dog things and dog behavior. That and looks human. Chimps. Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. Does so, your does Franz hop on his walk on his back legs and open a door? No, about the only thing Franz does now is like poop on the floor and pee Aww. in his diaper. So. Oh, Franz. Anyway. All right, John. Well, I wow. Wow. This has been amazing. <laughs> amazing. This is uh, human number two, wannabe bonobo, Omega Man, yeah. signing off. <laughs> Look, I'll even, you give me a dominant bonobo, I'll be, I'd love to be a subordinate bonobo male. It's yeah. like, with all the sex, that's all I care about. Really. Yeah. That's all I care about. Wow. Well, and some <laughs> video games. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. If you found this podcast interesting, uh, please tell a friend about it. And always be sure to uh, 
to check us out on Facebook and on our Instagram. And everybody, with everything going on in the world, let's try to <laughs> let's just I, try vote for women and just yeah. chill out. Let that let yeah. it yeah and have sex. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Love you, John. Thanks love for you. everything, everybody. Yep. Bye. Bye. Bye.